for Robinson Township. My name is Gretchen Moore, and I want to thank you all for coming here tonight and participating in your local government. We're going to start with um, a Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll get started with the agenda. <laughs> There are rules and procedures for the hearing tonight. If you didn't get a copy, there's some copies sitting up here on the stage. And if you know you'd like to speak, we'd appreciate it if you could come sign up in advance so then we can move through the names in an orderly fashion. If you don't sign up, uh, if you change your mind and want to speak later, that's fine, and I'll have an opportunity at the end to call people uh, by raising their hand. As I said, my name is Gretchen Moore. I am one of the township solicitors here. Next to me are your supervisors. Chairman Roger Kendall, Vice Chairman Steve Duran, and Supervisor Mark Brositz. We are here tonight for a public hearing. It's a public hearing on the ordinance entitled, An Ordinance of the Township of Robinson, Washington County, Pennsylvania, amending Chapter 27 of the Township Code by amending the zoning ordinance of Robinson Township and to provide for a rezoning of certain parcels in the township, including a zoning map change. Now, uh, basically, uh, the amendments are changing the Robinson Township Zoning Ordinance, which was most recently amended effective December 26, 2013, and this amendment does include a zoning map change. I'm going to read through the rules and procedures so we're all on the same page for tonight. I know there's a lot of people here, and it's quite hot, so we want to you know, move through this hearing in an orderly fashion. Okay, there will be a general swearing in of all the residents and visitors who are present at the public hearing. The swearing in shall take place at the beginning of the hearing. It will be the beginning of the public hearing part, which will happen in a few steps. The township solicitor shall be the presiding officer of this public hearing. Pursuant to Robinson Township Resolution 0608, the township solicitor as presiding officer shall be responsible for the orderly conduct of business at this public hearing. All residents and visitors who wish to speak at the hearing should sign up in advance of the start of the hearing. The presiding officer will read from the list in the order residents and visitors have signed up. After the list is completed, those residents and visitors who did not sign up will be permitted to speak upon being recognized by the presiding officer. All public comments shall be heard from the podium, which is situated right in the front of the auditorium here, and there is a microphone uh, sitting with the podium as well. Pursuant to Robinson Township Resolution 0608, each speaker will be permitted to speak for a period not exceeding three minutes. Again, pursuant to Resolution 0608, each speaker must state his or her name and address for the record. Again, pursuant to the resolution, all public comments must be directed to the presiding officer. Speakers shall be permitted to make public comment. This is not a time for seeking answers or an exchange um, with your supervisors or the solicitor for that matter. This is a, a legislative public hearing which is different from a judicial hearing. It's a place for you to be heard uh, and to say your piece for consideration by the supervisors. Again, pursuant to the resolution 0608, public comment shall be brief, concise, and specific as to the issue or nature of the problem or the matter at hand tonight, which is the zoning board. Okay. Next, I will be going and going through the exhibits to enter all the exhibits into evidence for tonight. After that point, there will be some remarks from the chairman. He will speak about the process of how we got here and a summary of the proposed changes for your benefit. After that, we will move on to the public hearing. Um, we'll do a swearing in of everybody, and I will then begin to call the names in the order that they're on the, on the list, and everyone can go through their three minutes of speaking. And then we'll close the hearing. Okay. Uh, this part might be a little boring. I'm going to enter the binder of evidence into the binder of exhibits into the into evidence. So I'm just going to read through what we're putting into evidence so that you're aware. Okay. The first exhibit will be the proposed amendments set forth in the ordinance. 
Okay, the second exhibit will be the proposed zoning map change. The third exhibit will be the previous ordinance, effective December 26, 2013, which can be used as comparison with the new changes, the changes set forth in the new ordinance. The fourth exhibit will be the zoning map effective December 26, 2013, again for comparison purposes. The fifth exhibit will be the evidence of delivery of the proposed amendments to the local planning agency. The sixth will be the evidence of delivery of the proposed amendments to the county planning agency. The seventh will be the evidence of advertisements in the Observer Reporter on May 14th and May 21st with proof of publication. The eighth exhibit will be the evidence of the physical posting, including the pictures and a listing of the posting locations. The ninth will be the evidence that an attested copy of the proposed amendment was sent to the county law library. And the final exhibit for purposes of the MPC is the evidence of mailing of notice of the public hearing to the property owners affected by the map amendment. Those are the exhibits we're going to enter into the record for this public hearing. Uh, I was just handed um, what I'm assuming is a public comment from a, from a resident, Mr. Watson and, and, and Ms. Watson. Uh, I guess they could not be here tonight and wanted to enter something into evidence, and so we'll enter that as exhibit 11. And at this time, we are going to uh, turn the microphone over to the chairman, who will talk a little bit about the process of how we got here and the proposed changes. Good evening. Um, well. uh, we're here this evening to have public comments on the amendment ordinance and the zoning map. Um, back in February, we had three evenings, three hours each of workshops to give public comment to anyone that had anything they wanted to say. The uh, base of the amendment was written by myself, and then I turned it over to my personal attorney and a few of their helper, a few of helpers wrote the ordinance to save the township money. At that point, in uh, March, it was presented to the other two supervisors, the Township Planning Commission, and to the Township Solicitor to go through to make sure everything was okay. And then they took over the process of the ordinance from that point, which brings us to the seat. Some of the changes in the ordinance, uh, or some, uh, the oil and gas section has been modified from what it was, initially it was a uh, semi-user friendly ordinance and then in no uh, November and December there was a new amendment process which restricted the industry very much. Uh, so that was one of the big changes. The other thing, um, some changes were that the 47 definitions were rewritten and changed from the actual state definitions and made up to whatever they felt was necessary. They imposed a lot of rulings on agriculture for hours of operation, sound levels, and so on, of which is in violation of the agricultural protection law, state law. So we cleared up a lot of those problems. There were a lot of issues also with doing any form of subdividing the property. So we addressed those as well. And also added some language for some possibilities of some new businesses in the township. And as far as the map goes, um, there was 122 property owners who were either by their personal request rezoned back to what they wanted to be or by necessity due to the fact that the IBD district um, largely overstepped into a lot of residential property, which was not the way it should have ever been done. There was hundreds of acres pushed into the 
special conservation district, which never should have happened. Um, so we tried to straighten out to the best of the ability, and um, again gave gave three three hour evenings of people to come and make public comment, and uh, did the best that we could, and hopefully this this will uh, process through and we'll listen to everybody's comments this evening. sure who is going to speak and who's not. Can everybody just raise their right hand and I'll swear everybody in. Then if you decide that you want to comment later on, you'll already be taken care of. So if you raise your right hand, please, you swear the testimony that you will be giving will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Thank you. Okay, we'll start the public hearing uh, section of this hearing tonight. Uh, the first person listed on the sign-up sheet is a Ms. Leanne Darnley of 1100 Cander Road, Boulder. I'm Leanne Darnley from 1100 Cander Road in Boulder, and I'm here to speak in opposition of the proposed amendments to the ordinance. And I wanted to um, point out that myself and 280 of my family, friends, and neighbors signed a petition to, that shared this opinion. And I was hoping that you would consider this when making your decision about the ordinances tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Darling. And our next speaker will be Ms. Kathy Lodge of 257 Minerad Drive, Boulder. Minerad, that's good. Was that right? Yes. Okay. Zoning is a limited police power granted to municipal governments and is intended to ensure that one person's employment of his or her rights does not interfere with the rights of another person. A zoning district is a geographically designed area into which are grouped like or compatible uses. Zoning exists to protect the due process rights of property ownership as well as to protect the health, safety, morals, and welfare of the community as a whole. Section 3304 of Act 13 granted the gas industry the right to drill in all zoning districts and to operate compressor stations and processing plants in most districts. Section 33 of Act 13 declared that state environmental laws occupying the the, field, the entire field of oil and gas regulations to the exclusion of local ordinances. In other words, Act 13 said that state was the only game in town with regard to environmental protection. The Supreme Court unambiguously struck down sections 3303 and 3304 as unconstitutional. They said that local municipalities could zone and could regulate the location of gas drilling, and they had to do this in a matter consistent with the Environmental Protection Amendment, Article 1, Section 27 of the Constitution. They also clearly stated that gas drilling is an industrial operation and may not exist in a residential area or any other area where the stated, the stated uses are incompatible with industrial operations. This is a huge change for municipalities. They are now responsible for protecting the environment, along with the state and federal government. In fact, they have an affirmative obligation to do so. This, imply, this applies to all areas of zoning and municipal ordinances, not just drilling. The proposed Robinson Ordinance seems to be a reenactment of the unconstitutional portions of Act 13 and proposes to allow gas drilling in all zoning districts. This is a clear violation of the Supreme Court ruling and in violation of the state constitution. Therefore, it appears to be an illegal ordinance. No municipal government may simply decide what they wish to allow where. 
Land uses must conform to the constitutional mandates regarding zoning, one of which is that the uses included in a zoning district must be compatible. Any supervisor voting to enact such an ordinance should be aware that to knowingly enact an illegal ordinance could subject that supervisor to personal liability. It may also place the municipality's insurance coverage in jeopardy as insurance companies are increasingly prone to deny coverage under such circumstances. If such an ordinance should be enacted, citizens have every right and indeed obligation to challenge it in court as well as suing those who enacted it. Mr. Kendall and Mr. Duran want to adopt new ordinances that Kendall has claimed he and his sister wrote. These new zoning ordinances appear to be illegal. Why would they want to expose the township and taxpayers to possible challenges for passing zoning ordinances that violate Ms. the Supreme Court ruling? Ms. Lodge, Range with resources three minutes is up. If you could finish your next sentence and wrap up, thank you. If the message is to give back the power to the people, don't hand our township over to industry. Kendall and Durant are wrapping the township thank up you, in a pretty thank package. Thank you, Ms. Lodge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Brenda Vance of 6109 Maple Grove Road. Hi, I'm Brenda Vance, 6109 Maple Grove Road. Regarding the dispute with the petition that we handed in, when we went around, we heard a lot of people with false information that were happy to sign our petition. And now we've been accused of some of the folks telling them this information to get them to sign. Uh, I invite Mr. Duran to take some time when he, at his convenience, let us know when, and Mrs. Lodge and I will be happy to go around and talk to these people to clear up any misunderstandings. As stated many times, I don't have a problem with people getting wells on their land and making money, but why is it necessary to open the township for a free-for-all for the gas companies? Why the man camps in particular? in the special conservations, agricultural, and rural residential districts. Just a few facts I found while looking up crime rate around man camps related to the gas and oil. And this is from the New York Times last November. Quote, that violence has become far more common and crime has increased 32% since 2005 in the shale oil, oil towns of Montana and North Dakota. Arrest in one town has increased 565%. And in one town in North Dakota, 855%. The rapid industrialization of North America's countryside has brought a litany of big city problems to rural America. Critics accuse frackers of fouling the air, drinking water, and farmland with swamp gas and carcinogens, while drug and sexual crimes have stopped the drilling operations. And why are the oil and gas subsurface facilities and activities in all areas as a permitted use? This is giving access to every inch of our township. Natural gas processing plants and natural gas compressor, compressor stations were permitted only in industrial districts and only as a special exception. Now both are proposed in industrial, the IBD, and compressor stations are also proposed in rural, residential, and commercial districts, and all would be under either permitted or conditional use, which is much, le much less restricted. A water recycling hydro recovery facilities are proposed in commercial and the IBD district and industrial districts. Keep in mind, these districts are right up against the rural residential, agricultural, and single family residential districts. We're going to have an enormous amount of traffic with wells being constructed. If we allow this facility, which Hanover residents have already fought against having in their township, we will not only have trucks coming to and from the wells in their own township to this facilities, but from all over Western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Ohio. Oil and gas impoundments in agricultural, rural, and inner, the IBD district and industrial district are tracking ponds. The average fluid contains sodium, calcium, salts, barium oil, a lot of iron, numerous heavy metals, radium, and other toxic components. In order to have the capacity to handle these, uh, millions of gallons of um, earth impoundments are constructed these fluids, I'm sorry, earth and pumice are constructed. Uh, we've hit time. You can finish your thought and then we'll move on. Thank you. I can finish this one. Your sentence. Okay. Um, it's just that there is a lot of people that are suffering right now, having to have urine and blood tests done. 
they have a lot of um, benzene have turned up in their blood and urine and a lot of arsenic. And this is in around our township. Thank you, Ms. Vance. Next, uh, Ms. Rosino, do you want to go list or no? I will pass. Mm -hmm. I will come later. Okay, gotcha. Next on our list, and forgive me, I don't know if I can read this handwriting. It looks like Joe, uh, a 157 Midway. Joe Radel, yes. Joe Radel. 157 Midway, Candor Road. Did you spell um, your last name, please? Pardon me? You spell your last name? H R A D I L. Okay? Thank you. Okay, well, the thing I want to say is that we elected these officials overwhelmingly. Okay? So I don't see why we're going to a parliamentary type thing where, you know, it, you guys are there to make the decisions. Okay? And I wish you would make the decisions. Thank you, Mr. Rydell. Next on our list is Mr. Neil Matchett of 700 Candor Road. Neil Matchett, 700 Candor Road, Walsh, PA. I just want a quick comment. I didn't hear you enter into the uh, records or the uh, evidence, the letter that the Planning Commission issued to the supervisors regarding our comments to them. That was given to them by email and also dropped off, as I understand it. Stephen, I think you talked with uh, Tony Orlandini about that. So. Okay, I don't, I don't have a copy of that. Do we have a copy of that? And if so, we will certainly enter it into evidence. I don't have a copy with me, but I know that supervisors were all given copies of it. That's all I have. Okay, next on the list, Mr. Jim Cataway. Catney. Yep. Mr. Jim Catney. Sister Sue Charlier. At the same time, we're just, I'm just going to give you something short and sweet. I um, just want to let you know that we are in favor of the zoning changes, and we also want to thank Mr. Kendall and Mr. Rand for looking up for uh, the best interest of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patney. Okay, next on our list, Mr. David Foley, 232 Foley Road. David Foley, 232 Foley Road, Alder, PA. I support the proposed amendment, proposed amendment to zoning ordinance and zoning map. Section 308, Farm and Home Based Business Amendment, Section L, will acknowledge the work on our equipment when it is necessary. And I fully support our supervisors, and they are doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foley. Okay, next on our list 
is Mr. Dale Reisberg, 956. My last name is Risker, R-I-S-K-E-R, and uh, my home residence is 666 Joffrey Your Road. Some people think I deserve that one too. But uh, <laughs> I also own some property in a business on 956 Robinson Highway, formerly the old Tasty Freeze. I'm also going to plug in here, right? Everybody gets a free ice cream cone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, number one, I just want to make a few comments. Uh, I think that the new township supervisors are trying their best, and it's very difficult to try to please everybody. And I've uh, been involved in some organizations, and I know that's very difficult to do. But one thing that I would like to tell the people that are pro or con the oil and gas industry that it's an industry. And when you have an industry, my father, grandfather worked in steel mines and coal mines. You have pros and cons. We don't want to, and I give, I've given this lecture before, we don't want to let the pendulum swing too far to the right that we make regulations that restrict industry from coming in to our area. But we also don't want to swing it too far to the left that works in the opposite direction. You know. There's been accidents in steel mills, coal mines, and unfortunately, again, it's called industry. Accidents are going to happen in the oil and gas industry, but let's keep them to a minimum and work to all the best standards that we can work to. The people that I hear the negative comments from the question that I've asked in other township meetings, the negative ones, how many acres do you have? Now, if they had a couple hundred acres and someone's going to offer them a hundred thousand dollars and they still have the same attitude about it. Some say yes, some say no, but it's a good question to ask. The question that I would like to ask is our supervisors is what direction do, and I, this is not just in the gas and the oil industry, to the rezoning, what direction is it that you would like to see our township go in? You know, because I own some property I would like to help the township as well as, you know, look at what we can do in the township. You know, I think we need to grow in the township because the more growth that we get, the more revenues that we would get to bring in. I don't want to run out of time, but if anybody has any questions uh, about my direction, I'd be welcome to field those questions. Thank you. Okay, next we have Mr. Bob Foley of 322 Foley Room. agricultural and rural residential areas in the township. I am in favor of this amendment and I support our new supervisors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foley. Okay, I'm going to have trouble with this one. Uh, the address is 512 Pitt Street. I can't make out the name. Break while they check the recording device. <coughs> 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 Thank you. 
Said before, I've talked to Mr. Duran about this. Yes. And I'm sorry, could we have your name, please? For the yes, record? it's Andrew Zimmer, 512 Fifth Street, Robinson Township. Thank you, Mr. Zimmer. Okay. I personally am not against drilling. My concern is that there be strong ordinances to control what the gas companies can do in this township and what they cannot do. There's been several drills well under old ordinances that seem to work very well, protect the public, and allow the gas companies to do their business. John, if, if you pass these ordinances as they are now, you can't go back. I'll say it again, you can't go back. If you allow the gas industry free reign to do as they see fit in this township. The damage will be irreversible. I just cannot, in good conscience, even consider all the problems this township is in for unless you will re-examine re your ordinances that are written now and strengthen them in areas that affect the public safety and welfare and the control of the industry itself. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Zimmer. Okay, next on our list, and I think we have... Oh, no. Two thirty-eight RCR. Mr. Kramer. Thank you. My name is Mark Kramer. Two thirty-eight Robinson Church Road. Uh, I want to speak on behalf of the environment. Um, I want to thank the previous administration for taking care of all the hazardous waste dumps in our township. In our two thousand four zoning map. They were very clearly designated, and the new zoning map that was just passed at the end of their administration it seemed all those hazardous waste dumps just disappeared, and I want to thank them for clearing them up with their pencil eraser. And they even uh, promoted people to build houses on property that has hazardous waste dump and put turnpikes to them. Uh, we all drink the same water, we all breathe the same air. And we have to make sure that any ordinance we pass, any zoning law we have, has conditions. And there's nothing wrong with a permitted use, as long as you have administrative determinants that take the place of the conditions. If you have good, solid, sound administrative determinants, you can have industry as a permitted use. The last thing I want to say is we're in Fort Cherry High School. This high school was funded by landowner tax money. For too many generations, this school has survived on the income that farmers could make by cutting grass. And the days of the coal mines are gone. I know. I worked 25 years in a coal mine. I was forced to go back to school. I now teach at a middle school, Mount Lebanon School District, which just last year was named as the number one school district in Pennsylvania. And it was because they have income from other sources than cutting grass. If you shut out these industries, you are taking away that farmer's income, his right to his estate. And that's not what this country is about. We have a right to access our estate. You put too many restrictions on, you steal from the landowner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. And next on our list is Judy Kramer.
First of all, I would like to congratulate the supervisors on the publication of your first newsletter. Your accomplishments thus far have been impressive. I strongly urge you, though, the supervisors, to consider all activities and applications brought before this local government and suggest they be done so under the conditional use application. As I have said on several occasions, the conditional use format, as opposed to the permitted use application, affords the local government a great deal of power. It also affords the supervisors and the people of the township to have ownership of their community in which they live. Thank you, Ms. Kramer. Uh, Mr. Michael Orlanti. That. My name is Michael Oliverio, last name is spelled O-L-I-V-E-R-I-O. -I -O. I'm from the law firm Lynch Weiss LLC in Cranberry Township. I'm here today as attorney and rep personal representative for Brian Coppola and Susan Coppola of 121 Campbell Road, Bulger, PA. Madam Solicitor, before we get started, before we get on the clock here, I'd like to ask for a ruling. In lieu of both of my clients coming up and speaking separately for six minutes, we'd appreciate it if we could get permission for me simply to speak for both of them for about five. Are they, are they both here? Yes, ma'am, they are. Thank you. As long as they're both here, they, are. they have the ability to speak for their respective times. They certainly do. Madam Solicitor, the Coppolas have engaged Lynch Weiss and asked us to perform an analysis from a legal perspective as to the constitutionality and any potential legal challenges that could be raised to the proposed zoning ordinance amendment and zoning map change. Uh, as a result of that analysis, Lynch Weiss LLC, myself, and attorney Dwight Ferguson, who has many years of experience in the land use and zoning area, as well as a large municipal practice of zone, prepared a memorandum of law addressed to the Board of Supervisors regarding the analysis we performed as to the constitutionality of the proposed zoning ordinance amendment in light of recent decisions of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Uh, in order to respect your all's time, I have copies for each of you. We would ask at this time that that be entered into the record. I'll be happy to pass those up. That'd be time. great, thank you. In a very brief summary, 2012, a number of municipalities in the state rose a legal challenge to what was then passed Act 13 of 2012 by the General Assembly. Lead plaintiff in that case was Robinson Township. Uh, Brian Coppola, my client, obviously also one of the individual plaintiffs in that action. The municipalities, Robinson Township included, argued that Act 13 unconstitutionally violated the rights of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And in a published decision later that year in December, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania agreed and ruled unequivocally that Act 13, specifically sections 3303 and 3304 of that law, were unconstitutional because they breached the rights of Pennsylvania citizens under Article 1, Section 27 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, the provision which is known as the Environmental Rights Amendment. Now, public commentary and industry publications have described that ruling as one that reflected that Act 13 had simply overstepped the boundaries of what the state could do to limit the power of municipalities to address local issues by zoning. That is not in any way, shape, or form what the text of the Act 13 decision actually says. What the Act 13 decision says is that 
the, the Environmental Rights Amendment creates duties on behalf of government at all levels, state and local, as to the citizens, and creates prohibitions as to what they cannot do. Act 13, by permitting drilling in every zoning district in the state of Pennsylvania, violated the rights of those citizens to the environment and destroyed the reasonable expectations Pennsylvania citizens had into established zoning districts, namely that those zoning districts would not be corrupted by the introduction of incompatible industrial uses. That ruling clearly indicates, not by extension, not by analogy, but has already decided that any local ordinance, via zoning or otherwise, which does not take into account and properly balance the rights and interests of Pennsylvania citizens under the Environmental Rights Amendment is not constitutional and is not a valid exercise of the legal and police power of the government. We do not believe that is an aggressive reading of the decision. We don't believe that that is a request to extend that decision. This is a decision that has already been made. If the zoning ordinance as currently proposed is passed, it will not pass constitutional muster. Everyone agrees that oil and gas exploration and production is necessary in a community and that some level of zoning is appropriate to allow that to happen while balancing the rights of everyone in the community. The problem here is that the current zoning ordinance amendment that is before you does not in any way reflect the analysis and balancing that was so clearly required by the Supreme Court of this Commonwealth just last year. As a result, as has already been brought up, passage of this ordinance will inevitably result in legal challenges against the township. And based upon the current precedent and the law as stated by the court, Supreme Court of this state, it's not going to pass. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oliveri. I have no other names on the sign-up sheet, but if there is anyone who wishes to speak at this time, if you could raise your hand, and I will call on you. Okay, please. My name is Carl Zeno. I live at 866 Candle Road, Bulger, PA 15019. I am against the changes that the uh, board has up for tonight. Our roads are too narrow. It's going to cause too much noise. You want to change the noise uh, decibels. Uh, the work hours are too long. We can't even get a line down the center of the road. And I think the reason they don't want a line down the center of the road is because that way they can't tell when the trucks go over the line, which they always do. They can't even meet and both stay on the road when two of them meet in Canada. I hope that the supervisors, the next meeting, will tell us what was in the contents of the letter from the planning board. I would like to know what their opinion is also. The gentleman said about accidents happening to workers, okay? He's right, accidents did happen to workers, but it was accidents to the workers, not to regular people, okay? Like maybe contaminated water. And the reason you don't hear about any of them speaking up is they have gag orders. They're not allowed to speak up. That's how they got the money that they get from the drilling companies. So they have to keep quiet. So that's why you don't hear of anybody complaining about that kind of thing. And you have the obligation to protect us. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> One other thing. You okay? Yeah, I, I have a table for the decibel reading. And if you run like a bulldozer, for eight hours, okay, you will have hearing loss. So if you can have these big machines making all this noise and those those things that make like a, a sound of a 
jet engine, okay? You know, that's going to be way above 85 decibels. And that's going to affect your hearing. Thank you, Mr. Zeno. Anyone else who wishes to be heard? Please. George Lakino, 399 Beagle Club Road. Uh, in the ordinances, you guys have not addressed the compressor stations. It should be in the ordinance that all compressor stations should be all electric, regardless of what size. Uh, on the uh, on section M, where it says the uh, 55 dB at the nearest dwelling, I feel that there shouldn't be one sign that comes off of the compressor station. If you live a thousand feet away, which you have here, you should not be able to hear that compressor station. Okay. Also, the board did not address the brine fills. They didn't, they didn't address the cook landfill. They didn't cook the, the gun club or the Cinco site or the other site that Mr. Kramer uh, suggested there. Also, I believe you have to have the legal opinion on this. Uh, about addressing the deep well injections. I think it's a serious situation. They're looking for deep well injections. Uh, this township is owned by three, three landowners and they do what they want to do. Okay, also you have there in the IB section, uh, you've, t you've got too big of an area marked IB. As history, if you look back at history, you do not give these people uh, carte blanche. They want to develop, let them come in and show us what they want to do. You keep these districts small, then they can they can uh, come back later. We see what problems we have and go from there. A perfect example is you look at that tech world that we were supposed to get 10 years ago out there on 980, and it's still sitting there empty. Matter of fact, the for sale sign, the phone number is even incorrect. So there's, there's a lot to think about, guys. You got a tough job. You got a lot of decisions to make here but make sure the decisions you make is going to last us a lifetime. Thank you. Chairman Kendall uh, touched on it there in his opening remarks. The Agriculture Security Act give farmers the right to farm without restrictions. And as was mentioned, hours of operation, uh, noise levels, they cannot exist. The new proposed ordinance is in agreement with the Agriculture Security Act and the right to farm. The 2013 version of the ordinance adopted by the previous Board of Supervisors does not comply with state laws. Our new supervisors are doing an outstanding job working for our families and the future of our township. They are planning, they're doing things legally, they're attending many classes, learning the right way to do the business, reorganizing the township, keeping it within legal compliance with the regulations and requirements. Thank you. services and agricultural terminology in the definition. I think if you look at the current ordinance, agriculture is spelled out, which a lot of the farmers fall under, which does not have the noise restrictions, but agri agricultural services do. And if you look at your current zoning map, how you have it zoned, you have some 
agricultural services where they are conditional use. So I think you need to take a look at that, and you know that's part of the issue as far as agricultural versus agricultural services, and that needs to be defined. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Orr. Is there anybody else who would like to be heard tonight at the hearing? Here, and then you, sir, next. Thank you. My name is Hutt Foley, 200 Foley Road. Okay. If you see no signs, drill a well, send a soldier home. Yeah. Two of my family went over there. Reason? Oil. Let's face it. We go there for oil. One came home in a box. I say drill, baby, drill, and the rest of you can go to hell. December of 2013 contradict and conflict with existing rules and regulations such as the Pennsylvania Agricultural uh, Area Security Law, which is supposed to lessen the interference of townships and other property owners that they can inflict on a farming operation. Also, there's Clean and Green, which provides for tax reductions for farms and also still limits the division of farm into two and ten acre parcels. This was especially uh, of interest to me. The ordinance was passed in December 2013. Section 401 prohibited my uh, heirs or our subsequent heirs from being able to really uh, subdivide the farm. Once the parent track was defined, subsequent heirs would have been uh, prohibited, I guess, from uh, enjoying uh, country living because the farm would not have been able to be further subdivided. So the new ordinances then will permit that, and I am grateful to you for that. Uh, also, the Pennsylvania Right to Farm Act, which limits the township ability to enact nuisance ordinances which try to control odor, noise, and working hours. This township is still 85% rural, and much of that is agricultural use. So the, um, the, the new ordinances, or the proposed ordinances, remove the contradictions with in conflict with state law and provide easy to understand text if people have taken the time to read them. I'd like to thank Mr. Kendall and Mr. Durian for their quick and efficient response to provide ordinances that better serve the residents of the township and also commend them on their time and actions on other matters inherited from the previous board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Yes, ma'am. Bigger Road. I have no sections, no articles, just a comment. Received several phone calls asking us to please be here because the members on our road could not make it, begging us to please ask you to put us back the way we were. They were very happy. And in regards to all this water and the pollution and all that, I have four wells on my property, four drinking wells. Three are contaminated way before any drilling took place. I mean, these are 25, 30 year old wells. The other well, well, was never tested. It's probably no good either. But in those days, if you got water, you drank it. You didn't send it out anywhere. It's fine. And as far as 
agriculture, smells, sounds, and all that. If you bought property next to a barn, you're going to have to expect some noise.